Despite German successes in the initial engagements during Operation Barbarossa, dwindling supplies caused chaos and devastation for both the Germans and the Soviets. With the situation growing dire, and with the Red Army flat out refusing to give up, the Germans launched Operation Typhoon in October 1941. The goals of the operation were clear, to capture Moscow and bring the Soviet Union to its knees before the end of the year. Leading the German Army Group Central in an all-out push towards the Red Capital was Field Marshal Fedor von Buck, a fierce and experienced commander ready to lead his men, along with thousands of tanks and guns, towards an all-out attack. Facing possible humiliation after successful takeovers of other European nations, the German forces would face an enemy not even the world's most powerful gun was a match for, the Russian winter. Barbarossa. In the early 1940s, the world was embroiled in conflict and chaos, with Nazi Germany aggressively expanding its territory in Europe seeking to establish a dominant empire. By 1941, the Soviet Union stood as one of the last powers opposing Germany, setting the stage for a massive confrontation that would shape the course of the global conflict. Then Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest invasion in history, with the ambitious goal of swiftly conquering the Red Nation and delivering a crushing blow to Joseph Stalin's regime. Initially, the German forces achieved stunning successes, advancing towards Moscow under Field Marshal Brauchitsch, who commanded three army groups. But as they moved deeper into the Soviet Union, they encountered stubborn resistance, vast distances, and logistical difficulties that slowed their progress. Despite facing poorly trained and equipped Soviet troops, the local defenders proved to be a tenacious enemy, fiercely defending their homeland. Moscow, the Soviet capital, remained elusive, but its capture was critical to Germany's victory, as it was a vital transportation and industrial hub. Eventually, Hitler agreed to concentrate forces on Moscow with an operation codenamed Typhoon. The target was the Red Army troops between Vyazma and Bryansk, and the directive was to achieve the objective before winter. The Typhoon Leading the German Army Group Center in an all-out push toward the Soviet capital was Field Marshal Fedor von Buck. A veteran of World War I, von Buck had been involved in the German campaigns in Poland, France and the Balkans, and was a tough and experienced commander. The German forces committed to Operation Typhoon included three infantry armies, supported by three panzer groups and the Luftwaffe's Luftflotte II. Up to two million German troops were assigned, along with 2,470 tanks and 14,000 guns. However, the German aerial strength had been severely reduced over the summer's campaign, with the Luftwaffe losing 1,603 aircraft and 1,028 damaged. With only 549 serviceable machines, Luftflotte II's aircraft arsenal included 158 medium and dive bombers and 172 fighters available for Typhoon. The stage was set for a battle that would test the strength, determination, and resilience of both sides. On October 2, 1941, the German Army Group Center launched Operation Typhoon. Troops began their advance with a devastating aerial bombardment, which paved the way for the infantry and tank units to move forward. The Soviet forces, caught off guard, were initially overwhelmed by the ferocity of the attack. German panzer units rushed deep into enemy formations, executing double pincer movements that pocketed Red Army divisions and destroyed them. The Soviet forces around Moscow consisted of 1,250,000 men, 1,000 tanks, and 7,600 guns. While the Soviet Air Force, or VVS, had suffered significant losses, extraordinary industrial achievements had begun to replace these. At the outset of Typhoon, the VVS could muster 936 aircraft, 578 of them bombers. The Soviet defenses fought back, using everything from small arms fire to heavy artillery to try and slow the advance of the Germans, who responded with a barrage of artillery and airstrikes. Both sides suffered heavy casualties, but the Germans continued to push forward. Winter's Fury On October 13th, the German forces advanced deep into Soviet territory and successfully encircled three Soviet armies around Vyazma. The Germans launched a massive assault, and the Soviet defenders stood their ground. The fighting was brutal, with close quarters combat and hand-to-hand -hand fighting becoming the norm. A week later, the German Army Group Center had succeeded in pushing the Soviet defenders back. The encircled troops had no choice but to surrender or face certain death. The Germans had captured nearly 700,000 Soviet soldiers, 
4,000 tanks, and 14,000 guns, dealing a severe blow to the Soviet Union's war effort. However, the Soviet defenders did not give up. The Red Army mounted relentless counterattacks, testing the invaders' resolve. As the winter of 1941 approached and the fighting continued, the German forces encountered the real effects of the brutal Russian winter. As temperatures plummeted, reaching as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the unforgiving landscape became an enemy in its own right. The freezing conditions caused frostbite, hypothermia, and other cold-related injuries, and the German soldiers struggled to keep warm in their inadequate winter clothing. The winter weather also had a significant impact on German equipment, which was not designed for such extreme conditions. The lubricants in the vehicles froze, causing them to break down, and the cold weather made it difficult to start the engines. The winter also hindered the Germans' ability to resupply their troops, as the icy roads and rail lines were difficult to traverse. As locals, the Soviet forces were better equipped to handle the winter conditions. They had more experience operating in such extreme weather. They had also prepared well in advance, stockpiling supplies and winter clothing. As a result, the invading forces suffered significant losses during the winter months. The freezing temperatures, dwindling supplies, and exhausted troops made it difficult to continue their advance. The Battle of Moscow The brutal struggle for Moscow intensified as the German Army Group Center pushed ever closer to the Soviet capital. Amidst the chaos, gunfire rang out through the streets while smoke and dust rose from the rubble of destroyed buildings, adding to the disorientation and danger for both sides. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Soviet defenders held the line in the face of overwhelming odds. The Soviet military leadership had anticipated the German assault, preparing a series of fortified defensive positions, minefields, and obstacles. The fighting was fierce, with both sides engaged in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat and artillery duels. The Germans deployed every tactic in their arsenal, including flamethrowers and grenades, to try and break through the Soviet defenses, which were inflicting heavy losses on them in return. On November 15, 1941, the Soviet forces launched a massive counterattack to break the German encirclement. Once again, close quarters combat and hand-to-hand -hand fighting became the norm. The battle reached its climax on December 5, 1941, when the German army launched a massive assault on the Soviet positions. The fighting was intense, with the Germans making significant gains at the cost of heavy losses. However, the Soviet defenders held, and the German advance was halted. General Ivan Konev's Kalinin Front led one of the most significant counterattacks, breaking through German lines and recapturing the city of Kalinin. This success provided a much-needed morale boost for the Soviet defenders, demonstrating that the Germans were not invincible. Retreat By December, the German advance had ground to a halt, and the Soviets began to push the invaders back. The tide of the war shifted, signaling a new phase in the struggle on the Eastern Front sending shockwaves through the military leadership of the Third Reich. The battle had claimed the lives of tens of thousands of soldiers and civilians, and the suffering and devastation were immense. Troops on both sides struggled with the freezing temperatures, dwindling supplies, and exhaustion during the brutal winter. Field Marshal Fedor von Buck clashed with Adolf Hitler over the direction of the operation. The disagreements ultimately undermined the effectiveness of the German offensive, and Hitler relieved von Buck of his command on December 18, 1941. Despite the change in leadership, the Germans were unable to stem the Soviet counteroffensive. By January 1942, the Red Army had successfully driven the Germans back from Moscow. The aftermath of the battle was significant. The German forces suffered a devastating defeat, losing over 100,000 soldiers, 1,000 tanks, and 1,500 aircraft. The failure of Operation Typhoon marked a crucial turning point and gave a much-needed boost to the Red Army. They would later mount a series of successful offensives, turning the tide on the Eastern Front, all the way to the eventual defeat of Nazi Germany. Thank you for watching our video. Don't hesitate to subscribe to Dark Docs, and make sure to check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels for many more epic stories from the World Wars and the equipment behind them. Also, please leave us a like, and don't forget to activate the notifications bell to stay tuned.